So the the third talk uh, today is is by uh, Will Hyde from Durham University, and he will speak about spectral gap for random surface with cusp. And uh, now you can go ahead. The stage is yours. Uh, thank you for inviting me to talk. Uh, title is uh, Spectral Gap for Random Surfaces with Cusps. Um, so first I want to introduce the uh, setting that we're going to be talking about. Uh, this is hyperbolic surfaces. So a hyperbolic surface X is an orientable complete Riemannian surface with constant Gaussian curvature of minus one. Uh, we can model these surfaces on the upper half plane. So the set of uh, complex numbers with uh, strictly positive imaginary part uh, quips with the usual metric that's given below. We can define a Laplacian on the upper half plane. And uh, with this metric, it's any of these coordinates is given uh, by the formula below. Okay, so the group of isometries of the upper half plane is PSL2 of R. And uh, we can realize uh, any hyperbolic surface as the quotient of the upper half plane by a discrete subgroup of PSL2R. And if X is a non-compact finite area surface, then this is a finitely generated free group. So we can define a Laplacian on a hyperbolic surface. So it's possible to show that uh, the Laplacian on the upper half plane is preserved by um, the action of PSL2R and uh, descends to a, an operator on uh, smooth, compactly supported functions of X. And then uh, we can show that there's a unique self adjoint extension, which we call a Laplacian on X. So the, the uh, topology of a non-compact finite area surface is uniquely determined by the genus and the number of cusps. So cusp, um, as shown in this picture here, looks like that. And uh, it's a region that's isometric to um, the set of points in the upper half plane with strictly positive, sorry, with an imaginary part greater than one, uh, quotiented by the action of the parabolic, uh, the subgroup generated by the parabolic motion that maps Z to Z plus one. Uh, and throughout this, this talk, we'll mostly be focused on uh, non-compact finite area surfaces. So now I want to talk about the spectrum of non-compact finite area surfaces. So the spectrum of the Laplacian on X, uh, which we'll uh, normally refer to as a spectrum of X. So this is the set of complex numbers for which the operator lambda minus uh, Laplacian fails to have a bounded inverse. So we can summarize the, uh, the spectrum as follows. We always have absolutely continuous spectrum between one quarter and infinity. And the multiplicity is equal to the number of cusps. So this, the discrete spectrum consists of at most finitely many eigenvalues between zero and one quarter. We always have, uh, we always have the uh, zero eigenvalue uh, this is because constant functions are L2 on finite area surfaces. And uh, if the surface is connected, then this is a simple eigenvalue. The multiplicity of a zero eigenvalue is equal to the number of connected components. Uh, there's also possibly infinitely many embedded eigenvalues in, the, in between uh, one quarter and infinity. It's uh, conjectured that actually a typical surface has no embedded eigenvalues. Okay, and this, uh, this picture demonstrates the, uh, the spectrum of a finite area non-compact surface. So we have uh, the eigenvalue at zero, the absolutely continuous spectrum between one quarter and infinity, and then possibly the discrete spectrum between zero and one quarter, and then possibly embedded eigenvalues. So we say that a surface has a, set, has, has a spectral gap of size A if uh, there is if the uh, spectrum between zero and A is empty. Now in the context of finite area of hyperbolic surfaces, a surface with optimal spectral gap has no discrete eigenvalues between uh, below one quarter. So we're interested in, in the following question. Do random non-compact finite area surfaces have uniform spectral gap? If, uh, can this spectral gap be made explicit? And if it can, how big can this spectral gap be? So I want to talk a little bit about the Selberg eigenvalue conjecture. This provides possibly some motivation for studying uh, the spectral gap of finite area non-compact surfaces. 
So for n greater than or equal to one, the uh, principal congruence subgroup of SL2Z of level n is the set of matrices in SL2Z, uh, which are congruent to the identity modulo n. For n greater than two, uh, the quotient of the upper half plane by this subgroup is a non-compact finite area hyperbolic surface. And Selberg made the following conjecture. For every n greater than or equal to one, the surfaces xn have optimal spectral gap. So the first non-zero eigenvalue is greater than or equal to one quarter. Okay, so this conjecture is still open, but there's been uh, quite a lot of progress made on it so far. So Selberg uh, showed this is true for three sixteenths replacing one quarter. And currently after many intermediate results, the best known bound is 975 over 4,096. So that's approximately 0.238, and that's due to Kim and Sayak. Okay. So it's possible to show that the number of cusps of this surface uh, grows, uh, grows um, asymptotic to the genus to the power of two thirds. So we'll see later on that in our random model that we're considering, we can't access topologies like this. The number of cusps is growing too fast in genus for our random model currently. So it would be interesting in light of this conjecture to know whether our results can be improved to take into account surfaces with cusps growing this fast. Okay, so first, so, uh, before I introduce the random model that I'll be talking about mostly, I want to introduce, uh, I want to talk about some other models first. So the first spectral gap result for random surfaces was due to Brooks and Macover. So they had a, they uh, introduced a random model, uh, a combinatorial model based on gluing uh, n copies of ideal hyperbolic triangles. Okay, and, and uh, in this model, they proved that a random compact surface has uniform spectral gap with probability tending to one as n tends to infinity, where n's the number of ideal hyperbolic triangles in the, in the construction. So, but this is a non-explicit uniform spectral gap. Um, and then McGee, Nord, and Puda introduced a, uh, a, uh, another model based on random covers. So you fix the base surface and then consider a random degree n cover xn sampled uniformly. So the, in this model, uh, the spectrum of the covering surface necessarily contains the spectrum of the base surface. So in this context, uh, one considers a relative spectral gap. So only, into, only taking into account the eigenvalues of the surface Xn that are, don't appear as eigenvalues of the base surface. So there's been various results in this model, uh, including that a, uh, a random degree N cover of a compact surface has a uniform, uh, has a um, relative spectral gap of 3 16ths minus epsilon with probability tending to one as uh, n tends to infinity. And so in a recent, very recent work with my supervisor, uh, Michael McGee, we proved that for X being a non uh, finite area, non-compact surface, for any epsilon greater than zero, a random degree N cover has relative spectral gap size one quarter minus epsilon with probability tending to one as n tends to infinity. So this is, this is the optimal result for finite area non-compact surfaces. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's analogous to results in uh, graph theory like uh, Friedman, uh, Friedman's theorem and Friedman's conjecture in graphs. But I'm, I'm not gonna be talking about this model today. Uh, I wanna talk about some previous work in uh, the Bay peterson model. Okay, so now I'm gonna introduce the Bay peterson model. So the uh, Merzikani was the first to uh, consider random surfaces uh, in this model. Okay, so, we're gonna, so the moduli space M, uh, MGN and what is the moduli space of genus G surfaces with N labeled cusps? Uh, okay, and this is the set of uh, connected hyperbolic surfaces with uh, genus G and N cusps up to label preserving isometry. So the, uh, 
the moduli space carries a symplectic form from the uh, the Bay Peterson form uh, rising from the Bay Peterson metric on moduli space, and this emits a volume form dvol p dvol w p. So it's possible to show that the total volume of moduli space is finite. And this allows us to define a probability measure on the moduli space by normalizing the uh, area, with, um, by normalizing the volume form. So Merzikani's integration form allows us to make computations in this model. So it allows us to compute the integral of uh, certain kinds of functions over moduli space. And uh, in term, and it gives us the result in terms of the Bay peterson volumes. So very roughly, the kinds of functions that we can integrate over are functions that depend on the lengths of simple closed geodesics on the surface in the moduli space. And also crucially, we can find um, there are asymptotic formulas for the volume of moduli space, so long as uh, the number of cusps, well, uh, so long as the number of cusps is uh, smaller of g to the half. And this is due to uh, Mezzacani and Zograph. So these are crucial, two crucial tools in the work. So there's been some, uh, so I'd like to talk about uh, some results in compact surfaces first. So Merzikani proved the first explicit uniform spectral gap result. So she proved that for any epsilon greater than zero, a genus G Bay Peterson random compact surface has spectral gap of size uh, approximately 0.024 so that's the, uh, the, the actual constant. The probability tending to one as G tends to infinity. This proof was based on uh, looking at the uh, Giga constant. And very recently, uh, independently due to uh, Wu and Zhu uh, and Lipnowski and Wright, they proved that for any epsilon greater than zero, a genus G Bay Peterson random compact surface has spectral gap of size three epsilon with probability tending to one as G tends to infinity. So I want to talk about the extension of these results to uh, the non-compact setting. Okay, so we're able to prove the following. For any epsilon greater than zero, if the number of cusps is big O of G to the alpha, for some alpha between zero is strictly less than a half, then a genus G Bay Peterson random surface with n cusps and genus G has spectral gap of size f of alpha minus epsilon, the probability tending to one as G tends to infinity, where function f is given here. So this function attains the value three sixteenths at zero and is positive for um, is positive in the interval zero to half. Okay, so this, uh, this function is plotted here. Uh, the intersection there is at 3 sixteenths. Okay, so this, so this tells us that if alpha is between zero and a half, then a Bay Peterson random surface of genus G with big O of G to the alpha cusps has a positive uniform spectral gap of explicit size with probability tending to one as G tends to infinity. And also tells us that if the number of cusps is bounded as G tends to infinity, we get a spectral gap of size 3 16 minus epsilon. So it returns a spectral gap as good as in the compact case. But the, uh, the spectral gap that we get deteriorates as uh, the uh, number of cusps grows faster in genus. And as I mentioned before, we can't get, currently can't get past a uh, big O of G to the half. Uh, whereas, uh, Whereas the uh, congruence covers, we'd like to consider potentially how big O of G to the two thirds growth of cusps. Okay, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about the outline of the proof. So both the proofs in the the, the result um, of the three sixteenth result for the compact surfaces uses uh, the uh, Selberg's trace formula. So in our case, uh, there is a trace formula for non-compact finite area surfaces, but there are more 
terms arising from the absolutely continuous spectrum that we don't want to consider. So to get around this, we uh, don't take the, we don't want to take the full trace formula. Okay. So we use the pre-trace inequality in place of the usual pre-trace formula. So in the normal in the normal development of the trace formula, we we uh, take a take the pre-trace formula and, in, and integrate it over the comp, uh, over the fundamental domain. So so we prove a pre-trace inequality that. Um, only considers the discrete eigenvalues of the surface X. Um, but so so now we'd like to integrate this over the over the fundamental domain. However, the issue is that the uh, function on the right hand side doesn't converge when integrated over the fundamental domain. So to get around this, we only consider a, a compact part of this fundamental domain. So the problem the problem is potentially now. Uh, we don't want to lose any information on the um, discrete eigenvalues. So potentially, if uh, if uh, so, this, sorry, the function uj is the uh, normalized eigenfunction corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda j. So we don't want to lose any information about uh, any eigenvalues when we integrate. Uh, so, but what could happen is that potentially, if the eigenfunction uh, localized in, high up in the cusp. Then we would get no contribution from this eigenvalue when we lose it in the inequality. But uh, fortunately, we can apply a result due to Gambert on the concentration of eigenfunctions. And this tells us that when we integrate over this compact part, we get a definite contribution from each eigenvalue. And then the right hand side converges. Uh, we can treat the right hand side similar to the development of the trace formula. Uh, so we get a sum over geodesics of uh, some function that depends on the lengths of the geodesics. And then we get some, we get some error that's uh, due to the parabolic elements of the, the fundamental group. And uh, but luckily this uh, error is negligible. Okay. So next we take uh, Bay Peterson expectations of both sides. Uh, so we so that means uh, we integrate both sides over the moduli space and then normalize by the um, total volume. So we can apply Merzikai's integration formula to the contribution of the simple closed geodesics. And then for the contribution of the non-simple geodesics, we need to use a different argument to bound their contribution. And this is based on uh, the, the method that was used by Wu and Zhu in their proof of the compact case. So then we apply the asymptotic results for the growth of the volume of moduli space. So uh, we use the result of Mezzacanian's graph that tells us this asymptotic so long as the uh, number of cusps doesn't grow too fast in genus. And uh, so we want so we want to uh... okay. So the uh, contribution from the zero eigenvalue is cancelled by the leading term of the contribution of the simple non-separating geodesics. This function f is biggest on small eigenvalues, so the largest contribution on this side, on the spectral side, is due to the zero eigenvalue. So luckily it, it cancels with a term on the right-hand side, so then the, the main contribution onto this side is the contribution of the, uh, of the uh, biggest, this, sorry, the uh, the first non-zero eigenvalue. And we apply Markov's inequality to, uh, to get the result. Okay, thank you for watching. That's the end of my talk. I'm afraid that was probably a bit quick. <laughs> but... Thank you uh, very much. Um, do we have uh, any Questions for uh, for Will. I wanted to ask uh, um, this demon. Yeah, yeah, go on, demon. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so I think uh, possibly. Uh, I don't know. Ah, yeah, no, okay. Uh, uh, if uh, so, the uh, the reason you have a uh, number of cusps is of g to the one half is. Uh, because of Rzakhanyazograph uh, on the volume 
uh, the result about the volume growth. Yeah. Uh, so this uh, this is like the, the method is sensitive to the to the error term. Um, in the asymptotic expansion. Um, so if you if you know the um, so so the uh, so the asymptotic that they have is um, is valid for larger growth of cusps, but um, we can only we can only get something meaningful for um, for smaller of g to the half. So yes. that's the question. Uh, and so, uh, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Does anyone else have a, a question for Will? Um, I, I, I have one myself, but it might be a bit naive. Um, so, so you use this, this vial uh, Peterson model for, uh, for picking uh, uh, random surfaces. But uh, I mean, I guess my question has two parts. Why, why is that the, the right uh, model in this situation for uh, uh, Putting a, a probability measure on the on the bottle life space, and would you get? Are, are are there other known ways of of putting a probability space on this, uh, and, and other significant ways where you would get different results about the spectral gap, for instance? Um, so, so there are um, there are other probability models for random surfaces. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure about. Um, I'm not sure about the ones using moduli space. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think um, I think it's probably the it's the natural way of um, uh, I haven't. <laughs> um, I mean, so there's, um, I, I mean, there are other measures, right? I mean, uh, there is. Uh, the Peterson or there is maybe like Liouville metric or yeah. okay I, I'm, I'm, I don't know too much about other other measures on uh, modular space so I'm afraid I can't really I can't really say much about this but um, uh, yeah. can I have another question yes yeah, sure. you, you, you can demo absolutely so uh it's kind of a large deviation right uh so you expect small eigenvalues to appear near the boundary of the moduli space Right, I mean, yeah, uh, uh, and so I, I'm not hundred percent sure about surfaces with cusps, but for compact surfaces, uh, you know that if the geodesics are small, then uh, one can construct a certain graph uh, based uh, based uh, whose vertices are kind of pair of bands decomposition. Pairs of bands into which the surface decomposes, and then uh, if the two pairs of bands are connected, then there's a match, and then uh, the small eigenvalues on the surface are related to the small eigenvalues on the graph. Uh, so somehow, uh, yeah, you know, there is a small number. Uh, there is a uh, like depending on the genus and number of cusps, uh, there is a bounded number of like that is below one quarter, right? I mean, uh, yeah. so for compact, it's like tw twice genus minus three, right? Uh, for surface with cusps, I think there are also results of that. Yeah. But uh, as, uh, can you? So I guess perhaps if you have like several small eigenvalues of a certain size, can you estimate the V Peterson volume of the? Uh, model, uh, but like the fraction of the Peterson volume of the moduli space uh, where uh, surfaces have the such eigenvalues. So, um, so you are sort of uh, saying, okay, it's totally almost surely uh, probability uh, you can estimate eigenvalue from below, assume it kind of goes to zeros. So then how, how small is the probability of that? Something like that. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure how how to go about it, but it's uh, definitely interesting. Um, 
I'm, yeah, I'm afraid I can't reach that. Can't reach yeah, you yeah, know, I, I guess yeah. it's kind of a general nonsense question. Maybe even, uh, so I'm not sure how, how much is known even for compact surfaces. So, so maybe compact is like easier. I don't know. And thanks, uh, thanks, Dima, for uh, thank you for, thank you. for, for these uh, ideas. Uh, sure, do we, do we have? I think we may have time for one other question, if there's any. Um, if uh, not, well, thank you, Will, again for uh, for this presentation. Thank you. And. Uh,